Today we're going to go over how to use Soft Console with your IP Office system. So let's start by going to our start menu of our computer. Either the top left of the screen or the bottom left of your screen has your start button. From there you're going to look for Soft Console. So I have mine in my start menu itself, um, but you might not. If you don't, you can go to All Programs and then find your IP Office folder and then click on Soft Console. So your soft console should open up like this, and this will give you your login screen. You'll notice that all these are blank, and you have your username, password, and IP office address. At the bottom, you have an expand button, which will show you different profiles that you have the options to select from, call waiting to turn off and on, and then off hook station to turn off and on, and I'll explain that in one second. So I'm going to go back to the compact view. In the username field, we're going to leave that blank because first we need to find an IP office system. So we need to look for the IP address. You can click browse here. What that's going to do is search your network to see if there's any available control units. All right, so here's our control unit here. I'm going to select that and click OK. Once you have an IP office unit selected, you can click user list, and that should show you all the users that you have available to log into. So I'm going to use J Ramoser click OK. So that fills that in for me. And then I'm going to use the password to log in. Now before I log in, I want to talk a little bit about what this expand section actually has to offer. The profiles basically contain information about a layout for the soft console window. So you can choose different layouts for your soft console essentially. The call waiting feature provides a call waiting tone when you're on a call and another call is presented. When the existing call is dropped, the new call is immediately presented to you. In this example, we're going to leave this option unselected. Next, you have the off-hook station. This option allows the hands-free features of the telephone to be used, letting the soft console control the operation. So we're going to go ahead and select that for this tutorial. And then last but not least, you have the show templates. All this does is toggle on and off whether you see these templates the ones that are created by the soft console itself. So once you have your own personal templates that you've created, you can toggle these, these default templates on and off by using the show templates button here. But because that's all we have available, it's not going to let me turn that off at the point at this moment. So now let's hop in to our soft console. Click OK. So once you click OK, you should get this little screen here. I'm actually going to make my screen fill the screen. And first, I'm going to show you how to save this template as your own profile, so that way you have your own setup. Um, we're just going to go to File, Save Template as Profile. And that should bring up a dialog box that you can create a profile name. So I'm just going to put mine as Josiah Ramoser. Click Save. And now this is my profile. So you'll see at the bottom left-hand side you have connected, and then profile, and then the name of the profile. And that's how you log in. All right, so now that we're logged in, I'm going to go over a couple different features real quick um, just to give you an idea, and then we'll get into detail a little bit later. So you have your call information panel here. This is going to display different things like the caller's name, um, the person who's calling, the person who's called, um, the duration of the call, things like that. This black border will turn different colors based on what's going on. So if you make a call and they're not answering yet, it'll be red. As soon as the call is connected, it turns green. And then once you transfer a call, it turns black again. Uh, this panel here on the right hand side is your directory. So you have a list of users that you can call and get a hold of on this side. Um, you have your queue, uh, which you can see held calls and that kinds of things. And then you have your BLF group. So this will show you uh, just icons of who's available, um, who's busy. Um, so that way you know who, and you, who you can and can't transfer to and that kinds of stuff. And then last but not least, you have your park slots at the bottom here. So you can park calls, um, up to 16 calls at once, which is kind of nice. Now go over some of the buttons at the top. You have make a call, answer a call, put a call on hold, transfer a call, transfer complete, reattempt to transfer, conference a call, you have hang up a call, page, and then record a call. 
You also have a compact view, which means you can drop out the bottom two the bottom two little display windows in case you need to make your little your display littler. You have a dial a dial pad in case you want to dial out a number that way, and then you have your preferences configuration. So I'm just going to get a call real quick to just give you an, a, a quick example of how this works. So let's say someone calls in. So you'll notice if a call comes in, the box turns red around your call information. I can see who it's coming from. Um, if I want to answer the call, I can just click this button here. You'll notice that the box is now green, showing us that we're connected on the call. And let's say Lori actually wants to transfer to a different user. So like, let's say she wants to transfer to Chuck Eulen, for instance. I would simply click on this box, drag over here, and then I would throw that on top of Chuck Eulen's username, and that call would be transferred. Let's go over how to receive and answer multiple calls at the same time. So first I'm going to have to make a couple calls into my system. So you'll notice that in my call information box I now have two calls listed. Now if I double click on one call I will answer that call and if I want to I can park that call on slot one by clicking park slot one. In queue, I have another call. If I double click that one, it should answer that call. I can then, if I want to, transfer that call around. Notice still that I have Lori Louderback parked on slot one. So I'm going to hang up this call. And I'm going to tell David Lover by sending a message using Control M, or I can right click on their name in the directory list. I can send a message and say that Lori is parked on one. Whoops, parked one. Click OK. And then David Lover can get that message and pick up Lori's call on the parked slot. There's a very cool way to change a user's status in the soft console. As long as the user has those uh, features enabled, you'll be able to change the do not disturb, um, forwarding, and all that kinds of stuff on a user. So let's figure that kind of stuff out. So if I'm looking for uh, a user, I can search in the field here, so I can look for Lori that way. Or I can just drop down until I find her name, and then double click. So once I see Lori's information here, I can see that do not disturb status is off, um, login status is that she's logged in, she's busy, she's not busy, and so on. If I want to change any of this information, all I have to do is double click anywhere in this white box, and it brings up a new window. So you'll see here that it has her username, her extension, and her full name. It shows that I'm logged in, and I can toggle on do not disturb, or bar outgoing calls if I want to. So let's toggle on do not disturb and click OK. So now you'll notice that she now has a Do Not Disturb on. So if I know during a certain time of day that Lori wants to have Do Not Disturb on, I can manage that here. I can double click again in this white box to bring up this new window to turn that off. I can also go to forwarding and change the forwarding numbers and all that kinds of stuff with this menu here. And that's how you change different statuses on a user. The park slots at the bottom can be configured the way you want them or edited to change uh, the label of them or the use of them. To do so, you'll have to go to the Preferences button here. So once we're in the Preferences, we're going to the Park Slots button at the top, and which should list all your 16 park slots. Now, let's say we want to delete one of our park slots. So let's choose five for just a random example. We select five, and then we can cl click Delete. Now you'll notice that the park slot 5 just no longer exists. We have availability to use up to 16 park slots, but right now we're only using 15. So I can create a new park slot by clicking the new button here. So in the park slot ID, I can choose a number or I can choose a label. Now if I choose a label, so let's say reception for instance, if I choose a label, it's important to know that only a soft console receptionist can use park slots that have a an alpha an alpha label so like a word label if it has a number label then anyone can use the park slot if it has a word label then only the soft console receptionist can use the use the park slot and then I can choose a shortcut for it so let's say F6 Alt F6 now you'll notice that the 
Alt F6 is already being used because a warning pops up that says this shortcut is assigned to another function. So I'm going to go back to Alt F5 just so I know that that one's not, because I know that one's not being used. You'll notice I didn't get a warning, and I'm going to click OK. So now we have reception at the bottom of our list, which means that it'll show up at the end of our park slots here. Now if I want reception to be the first park slot in the line, what I have to do is click on the reception park slot and click move up until it gets to the top of the list. So I'm going to go all the way to the top of the list, click OK. And now what we have is park slot reception, which again can only be used by the soft console representative. And then we have park slot 1 through 16 without park slot 5 because we deleted that park slot. And that's how you can configure and edit different park slots. We've gone over the different panels, and we've gone over how to answer calls, and we've seen a lot of this BLF group being used. The BLF stands for Busy Lamp Field. Now, what this does is it shows us who's busy and who's not, based on who, what members we have in this panel. You may want to add more members of this panel to be able to see who's busy and who's not, just on a wider scale. So let's go over how to create a new member of this BLF, BLF group. To do that, all you have to do is right click anywhere in this white space and then drop down to new and then you can either choose to create a new busy lamp field group or a new busy lamp field group member. For this, let's go ahead and create a new group. We can change the group name, so let's just say group 2 or something like that. Click OK. So now we have busy lamp field group 1 and then busy lamp field group 2. Notice I don't have any users in this busy loop busy lamp field and to create a new user all I have to do is right click in this blank box select new and then go to BF BLF group member so click on the member and I want to add let's say David Franz and his number is 2203 and click OK so now I can see that David Franz is in this group and it also shows me that David Franz has met four new messages in case I wanted to let him know. And that's how you create a new BLF group and a new BLF group member. Holding incoming calls is a very easy process with the soft console. So let's say we get a call from Lori and we answer that and we need to put Lori on hold. What we'll do is click on the hold current call You'll notice that puts her in the queue down here. So let's say we get another call. And I'm going to go ahead and put that call on hold as well. So now we have two calls on hold. You'll notice here at the bottom I have a couple different options. I can answer the selected held call. I can answer the call with the longest holding time, meaning it'll just automatically select the longest held call. I can conference all the calls together or I can transfer a held call. And that's the process of using the hold call function in the soft console. Now let's go over how you can intrude on a call. So let's say that Lori calls in and we transfer her over to we connect to her connect to her call and we transfer over to David Franz. So now we can see by our BF BLF group that she's on a call or she's busy. But let's say I have an urgent message I need to get into the call and I need to intrude on that call. So I need to find the user that I want to intrude on. So Lori is the user I'm looking for. You can see here that she's busy. Now if I have permissions based on the manager settings, so if the manager settings and IP office manager are correct, I should be able to intrude by either clicking F9 or going to my actions panel and then using the, the button intrude. So if I click on intrude, it's going to intrude on their call in which case everyone on the call should be able to hear my voice so David Lover and Lori Lauterbach should be able to hear that I'm calling and I've intruded. Now I want to hang up my portion of the call I can click hang up here and Lori Lauterbach and David Lover will stay on call and that's how you make an intrusion. Alright so let's say you want to make an announced transfer from a call so let's say Lori Lauterbach calls in and she wants to talk to David Lover. So I would answer Lori's call. I would ask Lori what she needs. She needs a transfer over to David Lover. I would put Lori on hold by clicking the hold button here. You'll notice in my queue that Lori's on hold. Then I would find David Lover's name in here by either searching 
like so, or just scrolling down until I find his name in this list. Just a little faster to search sometimes. Find David Lover. If I double click, it'll show me all the information on about, about his phone right now. I can click on his number and then click Make Call. So when I click Make Call, that's going to try to get a hold of David Lover. And then once he answers, you'll notice it turns green again. All the while, Lori Ladderback's still on hold in my queue. So we'll wait till he answers. So now that he's connected, I can tell David, hey, Lori, Lori's on the other line. She wants to transfer over. And he said, goes ahead. he'll say, go ahead, or something like that. And then I can click the Transfer Complete button to send Lori to David's phone. Once I click Transfer Complete, you'll notice that Lori is no longer in the queue, and my connection to David Lover has been terminated. And that's how you'd make an announced transfer. Now we're going to go over the different ways on how you can receive calls and annotate calls. So let's say we get a call. You'll notice that the border of the call information box turns red, and I want to answer this call. You have a couple different options. I can choose the answer call button here at the top. So if I click that, you'll notice that the call box turns green. This will show me the caller's name, the extension they're calling from, the extension they dialed, and then how long you've been connected. If you want to annotate this call or make a note on the call, all you have to do is go to actions here at the top, and then drop down to annotate call. You'll also notice that F11 will do the same thing. So if I click here, I can annotate the call like this, or click cancel and then hit F11, and it will bring up the same box. So I hit F F11 on my keyboard, and this box came up. So I can type in a note here, click OK, and then let's say I want to transfer that to Chuck. I drop it over Chuck's name, and then the call is transferred. Now let's go over a different way of answering a call. So I'm going to hang up the call previously. So let's say we get a call in. Another way to answer the call is just to double click in this box. So I can double click and then I have the green border showing that I'm connected. Then I can hang up the call like using the hang up call button here. And that's how you'd receive and annotate calls. So there's a cool feature in the directory panel that lets you search either groups or users. You'll notice that you have a search bar here at the top, but it's important to know that you have to have the user entry selected and the group entry selected to be able to search both. Now if I deselect both of those, you'll notice that nothing comes up, in which case if I search for a user, that's not how you spell his name, if I search for a user, nothing's going to appear. Now if I click on users, then I can just search users. So if I click on David, but if I'm looking for my accounts, I can't find anything. If I click on unclick users and click groups, you'll notice I have three main groups and I can look for those groups with the search bar. And if I have both of them selected, I can now search for either. So I can search for users or I can search for groups. And that lets you search through your whole directory just by making sure that these two buttons are clicked. Now let's go over how to send a call directly to voicemail. So let's say someone calls in. I can answer that call and let's say they want to leave a voicemail for David Franz. What I would want to do is go to my actions panel here and then go down to voicemail transfer. You can also use F3 on the key bindings. Click that and then find the user I want to go to voicemail for. So I'm going to David Franz and then I would click voicemail and Lori about Ladderback is automatically transferred to David Franz's voicemail. Let's go over how the different profiles work in the Soft Console, giving you an, a, a different layout for each profile that you select. So let's say we want to edit that number of parking slots and the number of BFL, BLF groups and that kinds of stuff. So quickly I'm going to go through the parking slots, which there's another video on how to edit these. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete some of these just to give us a different layout. Click OK. So you'll notice now we have a limited number of park slots. I'm going to delete some of these just so our groups look a little different. I'm going to add a different user here. Thank <laughs> you. 
So now that you have it changed the way you want it, you go up to the top right, and then you're going to go File, Save Profile As, and I want to save this as the Josiah Ramoser profile. Click Save. So that's my Josiah Ramoser profile. Now I'm going to make some changes to, to create a new, a new profile. So I'm going to delete some more of these, just so we can see the differences. I'm going to edit this one to say uh, accounts, let's say, click OK. Click OK, so now I have five buttons here at the bottom. I'm going to delete Dave and Chuck both out of there and add Lori back. So now I just have Lori in there. And then I'm going to go to File, Save Profile As, and let's do, um, let's make this Chuck's profile. Click Save. Now, if I want to switch between profiles, so let's say someone else gets on or I just like a different profile more, I can click on Login here at the top. I log in with my information, but I would go to Expand. And now I have the option to select different profiles. So I can go back to the admin templates if I want to and click OK. In which case I have all of the park slots available. Or let's say I want to go back to one of the ones I created. I can drop down here and go back to Josiah Ramoser. Click OK. And now I have those park slots that I created and the BLF groups that I created. And that's how you can change and create and edit your own profiles. One of the really cool things about the Soft Console is the use of the function keys. So everything can be done by keystrokes on your keyboard, by mouse clicks on the screen, or by using the buttons that are listed here uh, available to you. One of the main functions of the Soft Console is to make it easier on the receptionist to answer and hold a bunch of different calls at one time. Uh, to do that, a lot of times the keyboard is just used as a fast way to get around. So just let me show you the key mapping that you have available. To change key functions and that kinds of stuff, you're going to want to go up to the View menu here at the top. So you click on View, and then you're going to click on Preferences. That should bring up a new dialog box. In that dialog box, you have a bunch of different tabs at the top, and we're looking for keyboard mapping. So you're going to click on keyboard mapping, and you can see here that there's a bunch of different shortcuts enabled for a, a ton of different stuff. So if I want to make a new call, I can click F12. Um, I can hang up a call by clicking end, hold a call by clicking F4, and so on. Um, if I want to, let's go into the shortcuts here. So you have a bunch of different options here, so all shortcuts and hotkeys. So this will give you a list of everything that you can do with keys on the keyboard itself. Um, a really cool thing about this too is you can actually um, change what the keys are, which keys are what. So if I want to, I can change what, how to hang up a call. If I click on it here, I can click the little drop down menu, and then I can select which key I actually want to use uh, for my call hang up. And once I have that selected, I would click OK. And then now my keys on my keyboard, I can function the way I want them to. And that will actually save to your profile. So if I click the Save here, it says Save Profile. And those keyboard mappings will actually save to the profile itself. The park slots are very easy to use in Soft Console. So let's go over how those work. So let's say we get a call. And you can see here in the call information that I'm getting a call, and I can answer it by double-clicking or using the Answer Call button here. And let's say I need to put this call in one of the park slots or put it on hold. What I'm going to do is just pick any of the park slots that are, that are available. You'll notice that all mine are available, so I can choose any of them. So I can park her on three. And now Lori's on hold in park slot three. So if I get another call, I can park her there. Or if I need to transfer to another person, I can park her there so I can talk to this other person that, that's going to get transferred to. And let's say I want to answer Lori's call, get back to Lori. So I click on Lori Ladderback here. And now I'm connected to Lori Ladderback. And that's how you park a call.